Well, I'm here today with a very special guest, John Effort, our famous MHA and MP of the Forty Grave Peninsula. Uh, John, thank you for doing this. My and uh, John, when you was a young boy, now you went in the fishing boat. Who did you go fishing with? Well, the first incident was my father. He was an uh, avid fisherman, right? In, especially in Forty Grave, and uh, and especially with a family of ten. So there was twelve people sitting down to the dinner table. <laughs> But I mean, it was a real way of life. And I mean, it was common in the coastal areas all around Newfoundland. Forty Graves happened to be one in the lucrative. Yes. Because they, they just have, seem to have success where they, wherever they turn. So that make that a, a part of your, what you're doing. And then you got to go to the vegetable garden. Yes. So then between the, the fishery and the cod and the vegetables, it's, uh, that's active for any family, especially uh, when it's ten girls and five girls and five boys. Right. Yeah. And uh, so you fish with your father. Did you fish with anybody else? Yeah, I, Jordan and Matt Fenton and myself. Just three was actually. Well, what we did, we had to do it was very difficult. We had cod traps down the Cape Saint Francis, and we had cod traps out there off the local traps uh, in yeah. Bay Roberts and Forty Grave, that area. So after the fishery, John, you went into old sail. I I can remember you driving around in a station wagon and delivering dry goods. Then. Yeah. Is that how you started out? That's how I started out. In the basement of your house? Yeah, actually in the little house next door. Yes. It's still there. We lived, that was our first house we bought and lived into it. Yeah. I used to love the slacks that you used to bring out to Aunt Audrey's and I'd buy them there, Then <laughs> plaid slacks. And then you had all these, and the nylons and that, because I know I think that became a joke, didn't it? Well, what it was, it was, it was a joke, but, but it was a good joke. It was, because you were very successful. Very, very successful. In fact, they called me from uh, Montreal, the manufacturers, Yeah. and asked me where I was selling all the pantyhose. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And this was a company who owned the, the agency for the... For the yeah. Band, I used to love when, uh, cause I used to work at Dan Audrey's and I used to love when you come to this, with the shop with all your stuff and that, yeah. right? Now, yeah. There was a lot of different thing, way of living in Forty Grave in those days. I mean, we talked quickly about our fishery yeah. and as it relates to Forty, the people in Forty Grave. And because of the fishery and the people living in Forty Grave create jobs in, uh, in the food and carrots, yes. turnips, potatoes. Yeah. I've had a little bit of trouble lately talking and I just every now and then I hesitate to go on. Oh, that's not it. That's fine. Don't worry about that. Yeah. But it's part of the, uh, the old timers. Yes. Uh, nothing that anyone can do about it. You, you have to live with it, leave yeah. and do what you can. But I mean, it's a one way trip. That's it. Yeah. Okay, John. After you went, after you done your wholesale business and your, because you had a big uh, place up in Bear Need, then you went into politics. Yeah, actually, I we had twenty two people working up in Everett wholesale. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. That's a, this side, this side of the Lions Club. Up That's there. right. Yeah. So we we worked hard and we were successful and we worked together as a team and. Yes. Yeah, everything worked out well for all of our work. I think. And then after that, you made the jump into politics. Yeah, the, I, I, the election before the, the, my, the time I ran, people were coming up to me saying, "John, uh, why don't you run for us? Why don't you get me go in St. John's and get a uh, get elected and go to St. John's and yeah. do things?" It was regular talk to everybody all day. So. I mean, whoever thought that you would get the most votes and all that then well, and a big I, old time up at the Bay Arena. Got elected seven times. Yes, you did. Got I uh, beat Clyde Wells and all the MHAs on both sides of the house with the majority of votes that I came yes. and, and they never had the, the Shearstown Brass Band behind them, did they? And I was going to say, with the Shearstown <laughs> Brass, Brass, uh, Brass Band, made it easy yeah. to go in and the building and, and have some fun. That's right, yeah. You were a major, major part of politics here in Newfoundland and Labrador. Yeah, well, I was involved in from the operations right down to the ground, right to, as far as we could go. Yeah. But I wanted to be part of the team. I didn't want to be doing something individually, looking, Yeah. you know, not the way that people would do it in, in, in any case. No. 
You you were there for everyone. I was there for everyone. That's the one. That's it. Yeah. And I was there for everyone because I know when I used to say to my AMHAs and my people that I work with, I said, this is a life that, that we got to save. We got to yeah. not ignore us. Because no. And, and you were in provincial for 16 years. I just looked at your bio before I came here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 16 years in, in provincial. Yeah. Yes, and then you made the move to, to be our MP. Yeah, I think uh, that one I'll never forget. No. That's the one I had with the trouble with Danny Williams. And I had the trouble with four MPs. Oh, yeah. They they wouldn't vote. They voted against me yeah. in the House of Assembly on that $2 million check. Yeah. And I think that took a lot of me. A lot of anger came out first right. to myself. I yes. didn't vote. I didn't go fit for it. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, when you, when you look at the way we, what we did here in Porter Grave, and you look at what we needed, yes. there was no comparison. No. We, 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 it wasn't working right at all. Right. So I guess that's the reason why I took the first jump and, yeah. and jumped in and organized and got a good a team of good people, which is no trouble no. in this area to get the team of people who love to the campaigning. Right. And yeah. I think that's where I get the most is, yeah. was uh, make, make them welcome and give them the respect they deserve and everything. We may change a few things. Yes. The one thing I want to assure you is going to be a project. Not while well we're campaigning, but after the campaigning is over. Well, it was going to be a party like the people of Forty Grave and surrounding area had never seen before. That's right. During a political campaign. Yeah. And everybody was just you know, delighted with it. Yeah. And so we, we made a decision. We, came, we carried out the decision and reached to, to the, the, day, the, end of the end of the day, end of the election. And that was a lot, that was a big election. Yeah. But anyhow, it worked out great. Everybody was happy. And to this day, we still do the same thing. John, when you when you were growing up, or when we were growing up, the Forty Grave Abbey was not a very safe haven for fishing boats. You had a vision. Yeah, I, I had a early start with uh, John Edgar Sr., yes. my father, he was a fisherman. And any time there was a storm or anything on the go, I'd catch out to his overalls and tag on his overalls and go with him. So I became quite familiar with the needs of Forty Grave, the walk condition, the roads and everything else. We need to do something and yeah. I quickly jumped on it with the local fisheries committee and talk to people on the street. And as a result of that, we got started on a, a project that will never be forgotten. No, it certainly will not. And and now they can tie their boats on, like someone said, with a piece of cotton. Well, almost. I remember when I, I think two people, I brought, when I had to go to Brigus and get them in my boat to come down and make an announcement on the Forty Grave Harbor yeah. running because I was a habit of work a day and night. It was, it was all about getting forty grave done. Right. I mean, got to do it. Get, you know, had to. I mean, yeah. people in double quotes, they weren't a multi-million dollar boats like they are today, but they were valuable to the owner. Yes. And when the owner became involved and he saw some success, well, that just put it that step further. Yeah. So we went, we had a good, a good start. And so the first check, I brought from Ottawa. I went to Ottawa and I lobbied and lobbied and lobbied and was, didn't think it was going to happen the way I thought it would, but it did. In fact, the guy I, I was an Admiral Fred, Fred, Fred Mifflin. Right. He was, he was our MP. Yes. And he was the one who said, John, I guess I'm going to have to give in here and, and give, give, get you some money. Yeah. The first check he gave us was 5.7 million. Wow. And yeah. people said, and we made the announcement there in this, this building up here, this, this concrete bit, the brick building. Yes. They had the house upstairs to have authority and right. whatever else. Yeah. So, so. So that was excellent, and and the money have, they've done really well. Well, I mean, they've spent right now. They've, they've gone out to over nineteen million dollars. Yeah. 
But it was all put to good use. There was no, I didn't see any wastage on it no. whatsoever. No. And I mean, the, it's the talk of Newfoundland, maybe it's even the talk of Canada. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's what's we like to brag about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's an interesting uh, one to talk about. Yeah. So, uh, yes, it is the envy of a lot of places. I mean, Don and I, like you and Madonna, have been in a lot of different uh, ports in Newfoundland and yes. Labrador. And I tell you, this place out here counts it all. Got its own name, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the more you do, the more you want to do. Oh, yes. It was going to a world, world cause and we're involved personally in a lot of people's lives. Yeah. Because everybody made it good. You had the the, the, the fridge in, in, your, in your house with very little food into it. Yeah. And that's because, I mean, the people had to accept the way that they were alone and not a high standard at all. Yeah. But if you keep going, that's going to change. And, yeah. And, Things will get better as in Grave did. Yes. I mean, yeah. the, the, the changes, the changes that took place all over the, those years. Yeah. Well, and one another thing comes to my mind. Madonna mentioned that a short while ago. The uh, road to the lighthouse. Yes. I mean, my grandfather was lighthouse keeper back when he was thirty-two years old. Is that right? My father was four years old when he. Played uh, with uh, Macdor and Rondo from Ipsco. Oh he, yeah. They were all at the same age and they became buddies. Right. And uh, my dad used to be at the lighthouse with his father, and when the school would be out, I mean they'd all run towards Forty Grave lighthouse. Yeah. And make up it was great to, to, to go in the lighthouse and see it, and then know that about changes are going to take place was very interesting oh, it is and now and now we can all drive to greenpoint lighthouse in the comfort of our vehicles and go right down and have a lunch yeah it's beautiful down there now isn't it, it it's beautiful the only thing i hope i hope they take care of it yes yeah it, well we got to depend on the public to do that because right there yeah yeah and that they respect it yeah that's right yeah